Hello world and welcome to Elevated Intuition. Today we are doing the energy of your next week. So this is a timeless video which means that um, whenever you discover it, it is good for you and um, it's also a pick a card which means you get to pick the card number or object. I will be placing objects here in a moment. Um, that resonates with you or that jumps out to you. Um, you get to use your intuition to pick that card, pile, or object. I have the timestamps down below and then you can meet me at your reading and I will use my intuition to read the cards for you. So I have three options for you today. One, two, and three. I will be placing objects here in a moment. Um, so for group one, we're going to do cookies again. Um, I really like the cookies. It's funny because my cards are all like um, darker colored cards, but my cookies are pretty um, bright. So um, to go along with summer from when I am uploading this. So group one, we have the watermelon. Group two, we've got a rainbow. And group three, um, beachy vibes here with the shark. Um, I also find it really interesting. I think that the, the um, watermelon points down, then we've got the rainbow that's a circle, and then we've got the shark that points up, and I kind of did that consciously as well. So if you still aren't sure which pile or group you'd like to pick, um, I'd like to invite you to close your eyes with me, take a deep breath in, and release release any tension, just be here in the moment, set the intention that um, you will get the messages that you need to hear for your next week. Take another deep breath in and release. Open your eyes and wherever your eyes are drawn, that is the group or pile for you. And check the timestamps down below and I will meet you at your reading. Hello, group one. If you picked one or the um, slice of watermelon, you are in the right spot. So the first card that comes out for us, which is basically the overall kind of energy we're going into next week with, we have the sea witch. So this is the sea witch from the Little Mermaid, but from the original Little Mermaid. So she's not necessarily as evil as Disney makes her out to be. Um, what she's asking us or you or the Little Mermaid and for that matter to consider is to be rational. And um, in the original, well, even in the, the Disney version of Little Mermaid, she's She's not very rational, and even though she pulls it out to a happy ending um, in the Disney version, the other version, not so much. So um, this is a woman of cool and composed judgment. The Sea Witch reminds us to consider our desires rationally, um, knowing ourselves enough to discover what really makes us feel fulfilled, takes patience, and can change over time. So the original story, the prince does not fall in love with her. Um, and the Little Mermaid, if she was really considering the situation, would have understood that and she wouldn't have given up so much. She would have been rational in it. I kind of feel like um, this, this next week is asking for some maturity from us that, yeah, it seems like there's all of these great desires that are out there and available to us, but maybe step back and consider the consequences of these things a little bit. So what else do we have here? Well, just a bunch of stuff, don't we? We have the world reversed. We've got <laughs> the lovers. Um, and then we've got seven of pentacles reversed. And the next card that comes out, we've got seven of cups. So yeah, there's a lot of choices out there. Um, this is not the end of our story. And even though we might feel like we've put in a lot of time and energy into something, um, we might want to um, consider if this is really what we want. There's never, it's never too late to walk away from something that doesn't feel right or isn't, isn't right. And what I'm getting, the, the cards that I'm looking at immediately and thinking about 
When I'm saying that is the world reversed because the world is an ending card, but it's reversed here, which means that even though you think that maybe this chapter should be closing or something should be coming to an end, maybe you put in a lot of work, that's the seven of pentacles here reversed, into it doesn't seem like it is really closing. It doesn't seem like it's really ending here. It almost seems like things are going on and on and on forever. Kind of reminds me of, and it's weird that this popped into my head because I haven't seen it in forever. Um, there was a movie with, I think it was Tom Hanks um, in the 80s and it was called The Money Pit and it was about this house and they just put putting money and energy and effort into it. And in the end, like it turns out to be really beautiful, but it wasn't something that they really, really considered um, going forward. So. You need to really look at your choices and that's what the seven of cups is saying is like there might be other some other opportunities for you there's also a thing called um what is it it was just on the tip of my tongue here opportunity cost so while you're focusing because the seven of pentacles is kind of like hyper focused on this one thing and not giving it a chance to let it grow um you might need to walk away from it for a little bit and kind of look at other options and then, um, you know, and it could be something like it, you're hyper-focused on your money. Like you're, you check your bank account every single day and you're, you know, it's just one penny here, one penny there, you know, and it's something that it's kind of like a watch pot never boils. You really need to find a different focus if you really want to grow your money, let that sit there and find like an, another opportunity. Now I haven't touched on the lovers at all. Now the lovers in the original, um, the original <laughs> Little Mermaid um, fairy tale that didn't work out so well. But I think this is this is a part. This is a little bit different than the lovers in that. The lovers is usually the. Um, it's usually represented by Adam and Eve. It's usually, you know, two people and in this one we have flamingos. And flamingos usually represent balance. You know, they they go around and they balance on one leg. Um, I do love it in this because we do have like a little heart here. But I feel like um, following your heart is a good thing. And I also feel like when you open yourself up to more choices, um, that like this situation isn't going to be helped from your like micromanaging it, micro focusing on it, that it allows you to grow. Cause I feel like the lovers, when it's not dealing with a relationship, when it's just dealing with you is about growth. It's about like um, a leveling up. It's about like um, expanding in your consciousness, expanding in the idea of what is actually open and available to you. And going back to the sea witch, when we're being very um, practical, when we are looking at all of our options, when we are reevaluating a situation that we're in and it maybe hasn't moved the way that it, it should have, is there another way that you can look at it and attack it? attack it from a different situation? And in the case of like the Little Mermaid, for example, if she would have been very practical about this person, um, she would have understood that maybe there was a different way to win his heart, you know, because she didn't end up winning his heart in the original. And maybe, um, and maybe if you actually viewed this person from a different perspective, that he wouldn't have been somebody that she should have pined over to begin with. And you kind of think about that if you're out of your teens and you think about um, like your old crushes, because sometimes you like look back and you're like, oh my gosh, I cannot, I'm so embarrassed. I cannot believe that I had a crush on that person. Um, what was it that really attracted me to that person? And a lot of times it's just the circumstance or it's just that moment and we need to kind of look past it and grow past it. And I feel like that's kind of what the world is saying as well, because like I said, the world is like when everything comes together and it's like the end of something and the beginning of something new, but this is still wide open for you. So we've got a wide open week. It's time to um, really look at your choices, look at the things that you have available and stop hyper-focusing on something, whether that is a relationship that just isn't turning out the way that you think it should, 
Um, you know, sometimes things take time to mature. Sometimes things take time to develop. And that's kind of what the seven of pentacles is saying. It's like, this is going to take some time. Um, and there's also a saying, you know, the seven of pentacles here, she's watering this tree is like, um, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. But the second best time to plant is today. But you understand that there is a cycle to things, that it is going to take some time, that just because you plant that seed today, it's not going to maybe mature this week. What are some other things that you can focus on that's going to get you further um, down the road, that's going to get you further to your goal? And maybe this is a, a monetary goal. A lot of times pentacles deal with money. And what I alluded to in the beginning is like you, you're looking at your um, investment <clears throat> and you're just seeing a little bit of advancement here and here and here um, maybe it's time to set that aside for a moment and look at some other options like okay this is a long-term investment I understand that I'm not gonna look at it every day but I'm maybe going to do a side hustle get this extra hundred dollars and put it into something else that may be a little bit more exciting and it's just a hundred dollars so it's okay if I lose this because I've got my backup but it is something at least that I can maybe learn from because um, the lovers is about learning and grow from because I feel like there's a lot of growth for you potential available. It's just that you've been hyper-focused on one thing or one aspect, and that's kind of what's been keeping you back. And it feels like there's like this exuberance too towards this thing, but it's not turning out the way that you hoped or expected it to. It doesn't mean that it can't. It just means that like for right now, that's not what's happening. <laughs> and um, we, got, we have to do something to move forward. Um, to level up in this consciousness. So let me um, explain further like the lovers and the consciousness aspect of it because remember that on on most tarot cards, it's Adam and Eve on this card and we've got this tree and this tree of knowledge, remember? And they eat from the tree of knowledge and then all of a sudden their current circumstance, they realize that there are things that are wrong with it. Now these are things that were probably always wrong with their circumstance. They just didn't realize it until they came into this new knowledge. They came into this new consciousness. And it's not saying that there is something innately wrong with what's going on right now. It's just saying that it's time to level up. It's time to kind of like look at something from a different perspective and look at some more options and grow. And that this, this thing that um, you've been hyper-focused on, it's, it's just gonna take a little bit more time. And if you still want to be involved in it some way, um, look at it again from a different perspective. So let's take a look at what other advice cards do you have for group one. This is the one that wanted to come out. Feast of Plenty, Choices and Their Consequences. Very interesting that that comes out. And Overflow, Overwhelmed and, and Plenty. So both of these cards are telling me that, yeah, you've got plenty of things going on. If you're feeling like a lack, because a Seven of Pentacles reversed can kind of have that like lacking feeling. There, your cup is overflowing. Your cup is overwhelming. It's just that you're not seeing it at the moment. You're not, um, it, it is so, so related to the Seven of Cups because Seven of Cups is like this definitely overflowing of different ideas, different things. Um, kind of like the big thing to keep into consideration, we've got the Seven of Cups and now we've got Feast of Plenty and this overflow is that the overwhelming part and the consequences of it. And I feel like the Sea Witch is here to kind of like bring it all together. We need to be practical. Um, it is fun to kind of look at all of these ideas, but what is it that may that is right for you and we have to like um not think of these consequences as something that happens to like 
very few people, but that could occur to you. So having like a backup plan for that. In the case of the Little Mermaid in the original story, it didn't turn out very well because she did not pay attention to the consequences at all. It was, she had to cut her tongue out. She had legs, which were very painful for her. She didn't investigate the person that she fell in love with at all. Like he was not even worthy of her love and attention. And she didn't realize how fantastic fantastic she was going into it there wasn't this real you know because I mean come on she was like she saved his life she was a little mermaid and she expected him to see her the way that she really was but he didn't he couldn't he was kind of like um not he really wasn't on her level and but she was the one who paid the the price of the consequences of that. So it is definitely looking at your options and you have like a lot of um, abundance and you have a lot of options coming in here for you, but what is it, what are the consequences of the options that you're willing to um, undertake? And it kind of goes back to what I said, taking like a hundred dollars and doing something uh, more exciting with it. Maybe it's that you invest in like a cryptocurrency. Um, and you don't know anything about cryptocurrency or, you know, but do you, everybody's talking about it. It seems really fun. It seems like, you know, this, this steady investment or the steady job, um, that you have here, um, isn't exciting. Well, you know what? Long-term investing isn't really exciting, but that's, that's actually the positive behind it. Okay, so understanding like the consequences of it and take whatever you're willing to risk or gamble on this more exciting thing it, that you can understand that if it doesn't pan out the way that you think it is, you can use it as a learning experience because the sea witch wants you to be you know, come back to reality and be practical about things and follow it through to the end conclusion. So that is, is so interesting, the cards that came out for you, Watermelon. Um, yeah, and, and, and I've just used the example of the financial situation. It doesn't need to necessarily need to be that. It could be like in, you know, in your job. And um, it's something that you just want to learn some new skills, right? There's nothing wrong with it. It, it seems like it's, it's adding on here in some way to um, help you learn some new things, um, help you achieve some new things, and give you maybe a little bit of excitement. But be careful what you wish for <laughs> as far as the excitement goes, okay? Um, everything is available to you and open to you, just like everything was available and open to um, the Little Mermaid, but just understand that there, you know, there's consequences to actions and making sure that you're okay with it up front as to what the worst case scenario is going to be, what the best case scenario is going to be. And what's really interesting is when we do face like that worst case scenario, it's often, um, we're like, okay, this is the worst case scenario. I'm okay with that. And usually just by looking at it and saying that, like you, you kind of avoid it because you know that it's there. Um, it's the people who are um, kind of blind to that worst case scenario that it that that's when it comes and um, kind of bites them. But I think that it looks like a really interesting week for you, group one, and um, definitely a lot of growth opportunities. And um, just looking at things from a different perspective and carrying out like those ideas. And maybe it, it comes out to where like you're not, um, you like all of these different choices when you, once you look at them and follow them through with all of their consequences and you don't choose any of them. And then you come back and you're like, you know what, I'm happy here waiting. It could come out that way too, but it's it's all about what you want, what your choices are, and what you are willing to risk. So, love you, Group One. Hope that you have a fantastic week. Thank you so much for being here, and I will see you in the next reading. Hello, Group Two, and welcome to your reading for the energy of this next week. So, um, Group Two is the Rainbow, and the number two. I'm just gonna put those over here out of our way and the first card that came out for you 
is, and this is a um, Witches of Legend um, deck. So the overall energy that got pulled for you is the Morrigan. So the reason that this is a crow here is because um, the Morrigan is a, an Irish um, goddess of war and she is a shapeshifter. Um, so that could be some meaning for us um, once we get to some more cards getting pulled out. But she is very fierce and um, when she gets pulled it could mean some battles for you, can talk about you standing up for yourself. Um, she can also be very territorial, so setting boundaries might be really important for you too, but she's definitely somebody that you want on your side. Um, the whole shape-shifting thing is really interesting because I'm uploading this in June, which the beginning of June, which um, is Gemini season, and Geminis are kind of shape-shifters as well. They, um, they communicate, they're very good at communicating and reading other people and um, uh, matching that type of energy. So that can talk about things for this week too for you. Oh, we got the King of Wands, very interesting. Um, oh, we've also got another card flipped over here that we will take. Queen of Wands, King of Wands and Queen of Wands, very interesting. Um, so yeah, I feel like you are definitely standing your ground and very much owning, owning it because neither the King of Wands or the Queen of Wands, um, they're not, they're not as cutthroat as like the swords, but they're not going to take anybody's, um, <laughs> and then we get the King of Swords reversed, interesting. They're not going to take anybody's crap, like they are just not. King of Cups, wow, so interesting. So first of all, um, with court cards, which is what we have, a lot of times these cards can represent people. And when I'm talking about battles and boundaries, we can talk about some people here that you might want to look out for, um, that you might have some conflicts with. Um, the King and Queen of Wands, Wands goes back to um, our fire signs. So those would be, oh gosh, what are they? Sagittarius, um, Aries, and Virgo, I believe. No, Sagittarius, Aries, and Leo. Um, King of Swords, I said that we are in Gemini season. Gemini is a an air sign. So other air signs would be Libra and Aquarius. And then the King of Cups, Cups can relate to water sign, which is Cancer, Pisces, and Scorpio. Okay, yeah, I just like basically put all of the signs out there. But um, because we have a the King of Swords in reverse, the person that I think you would need to watch out for would be a an air sign. So a Leo, no, excuse me, Libra, Aquarius, or Gemini that you might have a conflict with. Um, everything else though, I think really kind of relates to your state of mind. I feel like the more gone here, um, kind of being on your side um, is, when we talk about the King of Wands and the Queen of Wands, really stepping up in your power. Kings, and we've got a bunch of kings here, they are people who are masters of their field. The, you might need some help with communication this week. Okay, but you're feeling like you're feeling fulfilled. You're both emotionally and creatively fulfilled. Like you are owning it emotionally and creatively. And you feel like you are like just the master of creating new things. It's very, seems like a very great um, week for you to express yourself um, through your passion. So think about the things that you're passionate about and what you really love to do. And this, you know, is a burning passion week for you to just be on top and just own it. 
um, and it feels really good. Now, when we've got the King of Swords reversed, you might have a problem communicating with other people that this is what you're doing and this is what you need to do. We're actually coming out of, if you're watching this video when I upload it, this is a, these are timeless messages, but we're coming out of um, uh, Mercury retrograde. Mercury retrograde would give us this, this King of Swords and it would just kind of be like where things are just not flowing, like the communication isn't flowing, where we're getting um, emails um, hung up and that would be kind of like universally for everyone. But this, because we're coming out of that, it just seems like there's still some problems communicating with things. And the, only, the, what, the advice I can give you there is to just be very deliberate when you're talking to other people. Make sure they understand um, where you're coming from, the things that you want to convey. Um, it can be, I think, when when you've got these other kings here and even the queen of wands like you might um even though you're feeling really good and you're feeling you you feel like emotionally great and you feel like very powerful um it might come across as being maybe a little overbearing to other people and i think it's just more of a they don't understand you they don't really fully understand you it's it's you there's um something within the communication of that it has nothing to do basically there's nothing wrong with you and it doesn't necessarily mean that's wrong with somebody else either it's just a way that you know you just need to be very deliberate with how you tell them what's going on and it could be very much and kind of like <clears throat> in your relationships or in your workplace or even something on social media that something's lost in translation um, and you might be feeling a little bit attacked in a way, like you, you post something that you created and you're super excited about it and you kind of get this negative comment on it. Um, don't let those things hold you back. And in a situation where that is where you, you kind of, cause you are kind of like, um, stepping up and standing out this week. And again, that feels really good for you. It, it you know, we've got the King of Cups here. He's somebody who um, is very emotionally fulfilled, but it, he's not like overly emotional. So you're not like, you feel good internally, but basically you're the only one who knows that. Um, and it might come off as being like smug or cocky or something like that to other people. And it, it's up to you to decide like, is it something that you really want to invest your time to um, communicate a little bit better? In the instance of like an internet troll, maybe not. It might not even, it might not be worth it at all. And you just like either, you can delete those comments or you know, just agree to disagree, that kind of thing. If it is somebody who is like your partner, um, it might be <laughs> worth it to have a conversation and go, you know, I, I didn't mean to overshadow you or to, um, to be overbearing with this situation or I'm just feeling really, really good right now. And I feel like it's something that once you explain yourself and what you're doing, um, again, with these boundaries too, um, that you let them know this feels really good. Kind of with the boundaries and the King of Cups, I'm getting the, the thought. There's a, a Robert Frost poem that says, good fences make good neighbors. Um, because boundaries between people um, help define relationships. So you might set up some boundaries and people don't un really understand that and they might be a little bit upset about it at first, but it's really good for you mentally and it's really good for you to help define um like that relationship maybe it's a work relationship something like that i mean i've had um i've had some things where in a work relationship they have invited me to do personal things and that was just not my thing um and i had to kind of explain to them why that wasn't going to work for me or you know it just that kind of thing because I'm kind of feeling like you know you're really really standing out this week so that puts you kind of like um 
for these people who don't fully understand what you're doing or how you're doing or um, it kind of like puts you out as a target in a way um, and you're just like hey I feel really good look what I did look at this look at this look at this and 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 you're getting a little bit of negative feedback from it but it's really kind of just like hey stand your ground and um, it, as far as like the um, boundaries go maybe if it's again like a social media thing maybe it's somebody that you have to block maybe it's and don't be like be unapologetic about it like you need to um, worry about you and um, the the things and sometimes the battles aren't even worth it so going back to that agree to disagree kind of thing setting those boundaries um, and what that is but it feels like a really good and productive week for you group two it's but it's again just about boundaries and and maybe it's like you know what I don't want to have this conversation with you right now um, that's not what we're about or um, and it is okay to do that and we get jeweled web connectivity and we get Skybridge possibility of union so what is really clear with this jeweled web connectivity and the Skybridge possibility of union is that you are ready to take a leap into something more um, you look at I mean look at all the kings look at the queen like you have gone through a lot you are ready to create this web or to see this web as it unfolds for you and it the the jeweled web of connectivity and you can kind of see it here like it's it's in the darkness kind of and it opens up and you us like it's just like all of these synapses and all of these connections and all and the jewels that are like along your path are opening up and when I talked about that um, kind of like that good fences make good neighbors it almost feels like we are setting boundaries or moving past um, cutting things off that is no longer serving you or is behind you um, and you're realizing that there are better connections. Um, there was something that I said earlier about um, agreeing to disagree, um, that when we have these battles, that some battles are not worth fighting because it almost feels like you have elevated yourself or you're moving past those kinds of things. And you can just let some other people, like maybe an internet troll, like I said, that it's not even worth your time and worth dealing with it because we've got like this huge unfolding for you, this like huge kind of like discovery of these new new paths and these new connections and this new connectivity. And again, like I said before, that this feels really good. And then the sky bridge is just like this gigantic leap forward that you have done all of this work and I, I cannot like really impress upon you enough on the meaning of having all of these kings here because we've got the suit of wands we've got the suit of cups and even this this king of swords here is maybe like I said communication is something that you can work on but it it still is signifies that you've gone through all of it like you have gone through so much and you are here ready to make this leap into a brand new a brand new thing a brand new opening and i love that the morrigan is here for you because she it feels like um the whole shape shifter thing it's kind of like you're shape shifting and you're moving forward and you're moving forward with, a, with authority and you are creating and you are mastering and you are you are in control of your destiny versus being out of control the only kind of like 
wrench in the whole thing would be this king of swords reversed and it's just like a hey just make sure when you are making these leaps when you are seeing these connections that it, you are communicating that with the people around you that you'd like to leap with you and um, if it is somebody who is just not ready or to take that leap um, it's not like you have to cut them off. You can still be connected to them, but don't let them drag you down. Don't let them let you them stop you from shape shifting into this next phase. So that's what I have for you, Group Two. I really love this. It's like very powerful. I'm feeling like really empowered right now, looking at it, and it's um, it is creating this um this new phase this next step this where you're going and that is starting this next week so thank you so much for being here i love you and i will see you in the next reading hello group three so if you picked our shark cookie or the number three, you are in the right spot. And the first card that came out for you, we have the, um, this is from the deck Witches of Legend, and this is Bastet. And she is an Egyptian goddess. Um, she is like an older motherly figure. Um, she, the cat is here because um, in some tales, it talks about her, playing like cat and mouse with people, but um, she's fun loving and gentle motherly figure. She's got a great sense of justice. So that's really important to know. Um, and the other thing is just because she has a kind demeanor, you don't want to underestimate her. She definitely has a tough character. Um, oh yeah, the best that was an aspect of an older lioness goddess who seemed to have split in two, and she became Bastet, representing the gentler, motherly, house cat side. So that is her. Let's take a look at some of some more cards and see what else we can figure out about your next week. And we've got, ooh, okay, five of wands. Six of wands. This came out and it kind of reversed but I'm gonna, whoa, Ace of Swords, all right? And yeah, Six of Swords, very interesting that um, these are these are all just flew out. So um, it looks like we're in kind of in the middle of a battle. I just wanna look at the Six of Swords, this particular Six of Swords card here. Um, so it feels like what you have going on next week this next week is something very personal like a very personal kind of transformation the reason i say that is because we've got our six of swords reversed and then the six of wands kind of came out reversed and is kind of um upright the six of wands is you know we've got the five of wands and the six of the wands so the six of wands is kind of coming out of a battle and you have come out on top um it is almost kind of like this victory dance but i think what is really important because we you know it, it was it reversed was it upright and then we've got the six of swords over here reversed um what's really important about both of these is that you are the one who sees this victory or you see um it, it's very internal it's very um uh, making sure that you're the one who feels like you've had a victory. Um, a lot of times we might um, have a victory or do, you know, we're very much harder on ourselves than we need to be, I think, is, is what this is saying, is that, that take those victories, take that win, um, uh, be kind to yourself, and I think that's why um, Bastet is here too. Um, and it also kind of talks about the win, and sometimes we might have some sort of guilt over winning something. It kind of depends on the situation, but I almost feel like this is that type of situation when we've got the five of wands, the six of wands, where we're not really um, sure about how happy we are about the winning, 
and we've got Bastet. Now remember that I feel like this is all, and then we've got swords over here. So swords can talk about um, justice as well. Um, and that, you know, there could have been different outcomes. I feel like what happened here is the best outcome. Um, and that you need to see that for yourself, that you need to see how this is a victory. Now, it may be kind of hard for you to see it because it didn't come out necessarily the way that you envisioned it or because it wasn't necessarily a fight that you wanted to engage in in the first place. Um, five of Wands can speak about conflict between several different people. Like there's different directions here. People have different perspectives. Um, I feel like you, um, with the swords, kind of were trying to be diplomatic or maybe you saw other perspectives. Um, I feel like though there's a reason why you came out on top of this because you are, I think you have everybody's best interests at mind, but um, there might be some people who don't take it as well as you do. But I feel like even though you're the one who like comes out again, comes out on top or like won this, um, don't let them drag you down. Because I feel like your perspective or what you bring to the situation is really logical and is really kind of thought out where other people just weren't. I think it, it feels like there was a little bit more emotions involved, but we've got the swords here. So um, there's logic here in this situation. Um, and it is time to move forward. But I feel like when we've got the Six of Swords, because Six of Swords upright is about moving forward. It is about like a, um, like a storm that has occurred and you're moving past it and you're moving forward and you're marching forward and making progress. But I feel like it's reversed here because not everybody understands um, the positivity about this. And you may not even understand it yourself or you are just... There, the emotions of it are still involved. You need to be really logical about this situation. The Ace of Swords can indicate new information coming forward. Maybe that wasn't, um, maybe you didn't fully express it in, in this conflict and you need to, you really need to go and express it to people and be very, um, communicate your ideas and and how you want to move forward and it feels like the like very logical we need to be very logical about this because um remember i wanted to, <laughs> to look at this card because we've got the waves here we've got the green and blue waves um even though swords is an air card it's about information it is about logic it is about like those types of con um, concepts it is very much um in this this realm or there's an undercurrent of emotions that run through here so you need to make sure that you're making um rational decisions not emotional decisions and i kind of feel like a conflict that occurred here kind of with the wands could have been, um, or, or people who are still like, clinging to that conflict can be very emotional about it. And emotions are sticky because a lot of times we, you know, people want to feel what they want to feel. They want to think what they want to think. Um, uh, and you can't really talk them out of it other than to move forward. But I feel like, um, embracing kind of this like kind motherly because I almost feel like this um, best that is is the energy that you need to embrace um, and, and embrace the justice for sure but like that kind motherly um, you know bringing people together and, and being joyful but you can't do that if you don't accept your win if you don't accept that your idea is really the best path forward and whether this is a work situation or a situation with your partner it almost feels like there's multiple people involved it could be family though <laughs> yeah so it's not that you are winning this for yourself and i think that's kind of why when the sixth of wands came out it kind of came out upright and reversed and 
and we weren't really sure because it's not about an individual win. It's about everybody winning. It's about everybody moving forward. Um, and I feel like you, but you are kind of like thrust into this leader position or you're thrust in the lead. And I almost feel like it's not something that you necessarily asked for. It's just kind of something that you were giving, given. Like you don't have necessarily the authority to tell everybody that this is what needs to be done, but you have the responsibility um, to, to make sure that it's done. It's not, it, it doesn't feel like it's a full win position, but it's just something that you have to work through and get through. And I feel like um, being very logical, but coming at it from like a, a motherly perspective and making sure that you understand that you, you hear everyone, but this is kind of what we need to do. This is what we need to do to move forward. And you might have to communicate that um, in a couple different ways because again, I, I, like I said, I think there's emotions involved. But the, uh, as soon as uh, Netcaster preparations come to fruition, very interesting. And um, I, I feel like as soon as you embrace your role uh, and maybe you're not a oh, perfect storm the courage to step step into life I was just gonna say I feel like you're not necessarily comfortable being that person um, out in front of, of the situation but you're kind of thrust in there and it it's it, it's interesting that this came out like being the person that is um, stepping forward with this courage um, I kind of feel like all three of these cards are related. Like, you know, definitely she's she's being pushed forward as, as the person to follow. Best that as a leader and the perfect storm is saying, hey, you need to lead people through this. And the storm being um, kind of like emotional. Um, and I feel like this is something when we have the net caster here, preparation comes to fruition. Um, there is, I feel like it's something that you have been preparing for. Um, maybe you wanted a leadership position, maybe you wanted this and maybe, but you don't feel like you're fully prepared for it. Um, there's, a, there's something about, and I don't know if there's necessarily a saying, but I like that we're never really ready. We're never really fully prepared. So um, I, I know that there are people who are like, I need to plan this and I need to plan that and I need to plan this. And I kind of feel like this situation with the five of wands and this conflict just kind of like thrust you forward. And it's, it's not about preparation, but it's about now like stepping forward and taking that lead and taking that leadership role. And that there are building blocks and stepping stones in your background that says you are absolutely ready to move forward and handle this. Maybe it's not the perfect um, situation, but what situation is perfect, right? You can you can do this. And I think that the perfect storm, the, the courage to step forward, it's a finding your courage and being very logical. And even if you do, because some of these emotions might be yourself, like very much, I feel like there's some doubt here, but even you see this like swirling doubt, it's like, you know what, I'm going to do this, um, I'm gonna make this happen. I'm gonna step forward and I'm going to, you know, really kind of like be the adult today. I'm getting the idea of like, um, there's a saying and um, like putting on your big girl panties. <laughs> um, when I worked with a, uh, a physician's assistant and um, she was like the lead of everything, like she just would take charge and she would talk about putting on her big girl panties um, all the time. It's, it's like time to boss up. It's time to do it. Um, even if you have some self doubt um, and even if there's other people who are doubting for you, I feel like this ace of swords, it's kind of, this does feel like it is a new um, situation for you that you're not necessarily all, you know, comfortable taking the lead or being a leader, but it's, it is, the Six of Swords is saying like, we gotta let go of that negative emotion because that's how we're going to move forward. And you are, ab you know, the perfect storm is coming in and saying you are absolutely ready to move forward with this. You are the right person to do it. So that looks great, group three. That's what I have for you. I hope that you have a fantastic week. Let's boss up and um, I will see you in the next reading.